as always, by Tyler. As always, how's it going, my friend? It's going pretty well. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Excited to be here, as always. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. Fantastic. All right. <laughs> Holy moly. Um, <laughs> There's a lot of as always. Yeah. <laughs> and Ballsack 47. Thank you. you oh, Ballsack 47. Is that the one that's always been around? Yeah, the, he's Ballsack has always been around. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, here's a funny story for you, Colin. We do a Patreon podcast called Clubhouse, and all the topics are like people submit, but they're like life advice, sto- people's stories, things like that. And we have like sagas of stories. And Ballsack had some of the most impressive life stories you've ever heard in his life. Wow. And here's the thing. It got to the point where we stopped believing him. So have you ever heard of the porn star Riley Reed? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know who so, she is. So he claims. So Paul said, from what we understand, he works in finance of some kind. He has, I don't think it's, you know, giving away too much. He has quite a bit of money from what he has told us. Hmm. Uh, and he parties and, and does things like that. And he, he then had this story that he submitted where he said he didn't even know, but he went to a strip club and he somehow had sex with Riley Reed. And after that, we we're like, okay, we realized that every story you've told us over the years is a lie. And he's and it's that was over a year ago. <laughs> he's never submitted a topic since, but he still supports us. So I don't it's know what's It's very going. interesting. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. He's an uh, guy. yeah, it's a... I mean, that's obviously a bullshit story, but it's nice <laughs> that he's... <laughs> hung around it could be that he's forgotten that he even has that subscription as well so it's um, it's possible but he's sort of he's popped maybe. up here and there in secret mm. and we've noticed because we can that's see that's true but not yeah, everyone well, else can see so he's maybe so he's, he's around he's well maybe he would have been a very lucky man if that were the case but yeah uh, but <laughs> we know that is not we know case. it's bullshit and that's yeah. okay <laughs> yeah. yeah I think I think as well with uh, regards to this you know these these people because obviously like you said there's a lot of interesting conversation to be had but people seem focused on the wrong things i think it's the there there are definitely people on both sides of this this argument that are you know very extreme and uh, you know talking about this crazy shit but i think the issue is that the people uh you know i guess the people that are that are more left-leaning are the ones that are they're given a platform and almost made like those people are sort of vindicated in, in, in what they think almost. I mean, I don't know if it's true, but the way that I see things is like if you're sort of in that industry and you're not completely on the same page with a lot of the, you know, the way that these people think, you're sort of, you know, pushed to the side. Whereas the people that are on the right that are kind of fucking insane, uh, those people aren't given the same platform unless they make it for themselves where you see with like these YouTube channels where you make like 60 videos on why Brie Larson sucks or whatever. Right. Um, but those people aren't given the platform or given the, I guess, I don't know, Give I, I don't even know what I'm trying to say, but it's just the way that you see it, I guess. Because I guess these people do have a platform. Those people that are complaining about Brie Larson or Abby and The Last of Us, they do have a platform that, and well, their entire an platform they is about a, they, that. They have an audience. They have an audience, and I get, but they have a platform through that audience. But I guess when you look at, I guess it's mainstream. The mainstream games media, they don't, they don't have a place there. They wouldn't be, they wouldn't be welcome there. But um, if we've learned anything, James, over the last twelve months about the gaming industry, is they're all fucking liars anyway. Like how yeah, much, well, of, I mean, how much came out last year with this, <clears> you know, industry culture problem, the Ubisoft culture problem, and it wasn't even just that. Mm. What was it? Rocksteady had it as well. These companies that was full of these like toxic men that were sexually harassing assaulting uh, and mistreating the women in their industry but they were the people for years going on about how fucking woke they are and and their community mm, yeah, members going about how fucking woke they are and how nice they are and then it came out you're all a bunch of fucking liars anyway and it's and that's what it lets down so much of the audience that that gravitates towards those video games or um those developers and what the reason why I love what we do here, and that you may people may not like us, I could give a fuck, but we are who we are. I don't have a fucking skeleton in my closet. You're not going to find out something about me you don't know. I am completely in a hundred percent me on these shows. People know everything about my life if you listen to all my podcasts. Like the, I've got nothing. I've got nothing else. You, whereas these people that you think you know them. Um, but if they're just agreeing with everyone that they're surrounded by because it's their job, then how, how do you, how do you really know what they think? How do you really know who they are? You don't. And you can't then be surprised that they're fake. Mm. 
Yeah, it's. I mean, I'm glad you brought up Ubisoft, especially because I had issues with some of the dudes over there for a while that didn't want to work with me long before I stopped even trying to get any from publishers a couple of years ago, and then and ended up being like some of those guys are like fucking pieces of shit, you know? yeah. And it's like, yeah. well, yeah. I'm glad to get on. I was. I'm glad to be on the wrong side of you, fuckhead. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so, for sure. um, I feel like it's it's very weird. It's just that right-wing people are not really given the benefit of the doubt left-wing people are and of course businesses are um falling all over themselves to be woke which is just weird because you should just be a company just be a company you know it's okay like we don't want to hear from you apple we want the iphone to be better we want yeah you to make better better itunes and better ios and all that way i don't care about your political opinions at all i don't care about the political opinions of the people that work at your company at all you know, Google don't care, don't care. Twitch even when they were doing this thing, you know, a couple of days ago for Women's Month or whatever, and they had this big blowback. It's like because um, we don't care. You're a platform in which we stream video games. The people on the platform are the ones with opinions we care about. We don't care about your opinion, Amazon. You know, and that I think is becoming a little tiresome for people too. And so I think that the best thing we can do, it's as you guys said already, and I think you said it very well, um, and we had mentioned it earlier, we just we just erect our own places um, and do our own thing. And you're right. I remember at I, when I was at IGN, they made a huge miscalculation, and I was on the right side of this, which was like they really thought that people cared more about the name IGN than the people that worked there. It was a massive miscalculation, and they were wrong. Mm. It wasn't unique to them. It was, it was almost... It would have been unique to see it any other way, actually, at that time. So it's not like to disparage them. But it's just to say, like, there's just um, things are different now. And people carve out their own way. And you can, the beauty of the internet and these little micro communities that you guys have made and I've made and others is like, we don't, you don't need a million people to watch you. You don't even need 100,000 or 50,000 people to watch you. Um, Sacred Symbols is a huge show. We only have like 50 or 60,000 people listening to it. You know, it's not like, it's not like there's like five million people listening to Sacred Symbols. It's an incredibly profitable show. Everyone's paid very fairly, and we have much more credibility than the current podcast Beyond or anything like that. And so, it's a good place to be. And um, it's it, it it continues to be like their errors are our win as long as we can continue to build constructively on those things. And and you guys clearly are. I mean, you know, I keep an eye on what you guys do. I, I follow you both on Twitter. You know. Um, mm. I follow other people on Twitter. I'm keeping an eye on what other people are doing and how people are growing and thriving. And it's awesome. You know, yeah. it's great to see, like even you don't need to be part of that culture to, to thrive. <laughs> Didn't you guys get to meet finally a couple of years ago or, or more recently, like in person? Yeah. That yeah. Two years. Well, nearly two years ago, a year and a half ago, yeah. it was end of 2019. Yeah, uh, I remember we had a that. little, it was, we got together because I had a little group uh, with me and Tyler and the two others of the four pillars, what we call our like community. Um, we had like a community meetup in London where we got together with each other as content creators, but also our audience as well to meet uh, a bunch of people and like people that work like do moderator stuff for our Discord and our streams and everything and people that watch us. It was just, yeah, it was just really nice to be able to interact face to face. And I think it, it, it made me realize, and I think Tyler as well, that yeah, you sort of when when you meet these people everyone that watches you is an individual person and i think that makes it mm. feel even even better when you do what you do um and that's what i love about doing it is is the community aspect of it and the within our larger community we've got smaller communities with like our patreon and uh our discord and and, and whatever and you get to know these individual little groups and i don't know i, I like that i would i would I would hate to lose that by becoming too big for it. So I'm I'm kind of happy where I am, although steadily growing. Um, so I, I kind of would hate to grow too big for it because I think it's one of the one of the joys of doing this thing. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah, it's uh, it, and I think even to your point, James, the meetup really opened. I know I know it certainly opened my eyes up. I <clears throat> I thought I was going to quit making things and shows i thought i was like look i'm 20 however 24 25 like 